Hey, what's going on, Granny United? Hey, how great was that worship song, The Goodness of God? All my life you've been faithful. I'm going to sing, and that's why we gather together, not simply to sing, but to worship and to lift our voices before God. Listen, do me a favor in the comments. If you are thankful to the Lord for what He's done in your life, come on, either put a praise emoji up or some clap emojis in the comments, because here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and so. Let's celebrate God's faithfulness today. I thank God for His goodness. Man, we are so blessed. Somebody in the comments, come on, type in the two words, so blessed, maybe about 40 uh, exclamation points. Don't go crazy, but yeah, uh, we are so blessed, and to God be the glory, great things He has done. And um, and, and you know what? Last week was a great week because, you know, we had church like we do each and every weekend. But last weekend, we also added a service. We added our drive-in service, which to me is the beginning of us starting to move towards regathering. Now, listen, the church has never stopped. We have continued to see people's lives changed as we have met every weekend since the pandemic has started. And, and man, I am so proud of you, church, honestly. But the drive-in service, man, uh, we can only put 47 cars in the Salem parking lot. I hope you get a ticket. When they go on sale, and we charge $0 for it, but when they go on sale, make sure you get a, get a ticket and come on out and see the church family. It's for all campuses. So, and we give some uh, uh, tickets, uh, pre-release tickets to your campus pastors for those people on our campuses that really don't have access to technology or they're just, you know, um, not really Facebook or YouTube people. So anyway, I just want to celebrate you for a second. Is that okay? I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you for staying faithful. Thank you for staying connected. Thank you in this season for staying generous. And, and thank you for staying focused on Jesus. Church, I mean it. Thank you for staying engaged. I am so proud of you for staying true to the mission. The mission looks different, but the mission is the same. Depopulate hell populate heaven, to go everywhere telling everyone about Jesus, to put and make sure that we are keeping our hope on display, staying true to who we are in Christ. And who are we in Christ? Well, we're children of God. We're sons and daughters of the King. Listen, we are once were these disaster pieces, but now by God's grace, we are masterpieces created anew in Christ Jesus. As Ephesians 2 10 says, to do the things that he has prepared for us long time ago. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, today, listen, today's going to be a really simple message. I'm going to kind of be landing the plane as we are still in first Peter. But I'm going to be landing a plane on the local church and our responsibility to keep hope on display. And this is kind of a doctrine, by the way. You have been learning, whether you realize it or not, realize it or not, uh, we've been studying the doctrine of ecclesiology, and that is God's plan in this dispensation, another big theological word, dispensation of grace or the church age, that God's plan has always been, man, to save people, to bring them together, as we said a couple weeks ago, as a mosaic, as a picture of His goodness and His grace to a local community. And so, to God be the glory. And again, I'm so thankful to be able to pastor such an incredible church. I'm proud of our leadership. I'm proud of um, the one thing we have always uh, embraced here at Granny United Church. And we've said this for years. And so it kind of makes sense in this pandemic to be comfortable with being, somebody type it in the, uh, in the comments, right? Uncomfortable. We've always been flexible. We have always uh, adapted. And so in this season, that's what we've been doing. We've been figuring it out. And so you've been joining me from my living room for four months now. And uh, it has been good. We've seen over 60 people say yes to Jesus. And uh, people have been in our membership class. It's just been a good, good season for a lot of reasons. But as we land the plane on keeping our hope to, on display as a church, I love what Psalm 122 verse 1 says. The Bible literally says, now this is King David, and he writes these words, I was glad when they said to me, now somebody type these two words in a comment, 
comments, let us, let us go to the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody, let us go to the house of the Lord. And that begs a question in my mind anyway, and I know, you know things go on up here that, that may not be going on in your mind, but I'm always asking myself questions like, um, here's the thing, why is it a good thing? Why should we be glad when we go into the house of the Lord? I'm gonna give you some reasons today, because again, at Granny United Church and to God, Family means something. And so the first thing is this, it's a place filled uh, with God's presence. When we come together, the collective body of Christ, the local visible expression of Jesus Christ, when we come together, those that have been saved, those that have been called out and called together on mission, on purpose, for a purpose, listen, we bring together God's presence. And it's within his presence where we're changed. You cannot be in the presence of God and not be changed. It's within his presence that we get filled, filled with joy, filled with encouragement. We'll talk a little bit about that. It's within his presence we find comfort. It's inside of his presence where we find strength. I just want you to know there is something about uh, the gathering of God's people. And I know in this season, it's been a little bit different because we've been gathering digitally as opposed to physically, but we are still gathering together. And that's why every week I say engage, engage, engage in the comments because we're still part of a family, of a forever family. Here's the other thing why we can be glad when we come into the, into the house of the Lord, when we come together as family, um, because here's what happens when we start rubbing shoulders uh, with each other. We start encouraging each other. We get to inspire each other. We challenge each other. We find people we can do life with. Why? Because we're family, and that is God's plan. God's plan isn't simply to save you and that we would go off and do our own th thing. God's plan is that he saves us and he, he grafts us into his body and then he makes us members of a local body. And I love that. It's also a place where God's promises are taught. I mean, you know, let us, you know, he says, I was glad when he said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord forever and it is a place where honestly we get to come together and learn the word of God we learn and hear the promises of God we continue to download uh, what God says about us and it is really really good the other thing about it is why we can be glad when we come into the house of the Lord is it's a place where God's power is on display now think about it when we come together as a church, whether it's digitally or physically, we're constantly celebrating salvation stories. Again, can I just remind you, almost 70 people have said yes to Jesus in this season. Come on, somebody, praise emoji. Somebody put some fire, fire in the comments because that is God's hand that continues to work in this season. The other thing is we hear stories of God's provision. We hear stories of God's comfort, his protection, and his healing. And, and why do all of these things matter? They matter because they help inspire and encourage us. Because if God led you through the, through the valley, if God met you in the midst of the fire, well, listen, God's going to meet me too, because obviously he likes me way more than he likes you. I'm just, I'm just kidding, right? Uh, here's the other thing about coming together. It's a local New, New Testament church. Again, what did David said? I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Another reason why we can be glad is because, man, when we come together in Father's house as God's kids and we come together, we can be strengthened. I mean, it is important, right? Life happens and sometimes, what did, what did Rocky Balboa say? The great theologian Rocky said, you know, life, nothing's going to hit you as hard as life hits you. And it's not an issue or a matter of how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you get up, right? And what we get to do is we get to help each other stay strong, help each other be encouraged. We get to cheerlead each other along, help each other stay focused and inspired. And, and it's why the Word of God, man, in this season, both physically and digitally matters. I love what the book of Hebrews says. In Hebrews chapter 10, we read these verses, and I really want you to lean in because they are powerful. It says, let us hold tightly. Hold tightly. Somebody Type those two words in there because they're huge. 
hold tightly without wavering to the, now listen to this, hope we affirm to the hope we affirm. We've been studying 1 Peter, right? For a while now. And we have been learning about this living and lively hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we affirm that Jesus Christ was crucified. We affirm that Jesus Christ was buried. And we affirm that Jesus Christ is risen again from the dead. Come on, somebody. And because of that, we need to hold tightly. Now listen to this, because God can be trusted. Can a brother get an amen? Can the word of God get an amen? God can be trusted to keep what he promised. Even in these seasons when they're, they're difficult times and, and you know, things are shaky. Listen, our God, our God is solid. Our God is faithful. Our God is our rock. Our God is a refuge. Our God is our fortress. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. I love what verse 24 says in Hebrews chapter 10. And this again, we're talking about the context of keeping hope alive as a local New Testament church, as a church body, right? Because this is what it's talking about in context. Verse 24 says, so, so let us think of ways to, somebody type those three words in, motivate one another. You see, one of the responsibilities that I have to you, and ready, you have to me, and we have to each other, is to motivate each other. Motivate each other to acts of love and good works. Listen to the context. Verse 25, and I don't want you to miss this. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on, somebody, stay with me. Forget those notifications. Stay dialed in, okay? Verse 25 is game-changing. It says this, and I love this verse. It says, and let us not, listen, let us not neglect our, next two words, come on, come on, meeting together. Did you hear the word of God? God's word. It is the word of God. It is God's word to us today, as well as it was to those when this book of Hebrews was being penned. Listen, let us not neglect our meeting together. In case you have any, uh, any thought that we can do whatever we want to do or the church isn't important, you never, ever read that in the Bible. Listen, God literally says, don't neglect meeting together as some people have. Listen, God doesn't want us to neglect meeting together. He wants us to come together right now. I don't know the rest of the words. But anyway, um, here's what he says. Meeting together. Why? So we can encourage one another. Can I just say this? We have a responsibility to each other. Because the devil's coming at us and the devil's always trying to put a, a basket or a hope blocker over our hope that's supposed to be on display. So I'm supposed to encourage you to keep your hope alive, to hold tightly to the hope that you've affirmed, to not abandon what God has done in you, but to be the light, to be the salt. That is our responsibility to each other, to encourage one another. And I love this, especially, don't miss that word, that's a big word especially now that the day of his, listen, returning is drawing near. I need to tell you something. A lot of you are new Christians, but the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me, the Bible, who said Jesus was going to come the first time that God would become a man, and he did, and we celebrate that around Christmas, the same Bible, are you listening? I know I'm not supposed to say, are you listening? Because I said it like 319 times last week in the sermon. But I really want you to pay attention to this. The same Bible that said Jesus would come the first time and he did, said he's coming again. And if you know and study the scriptures, I'm telling you, we are getting closer than ever to Christ's return. You know what the Bible says? The Bible literally says, knowing that we are living in the end times, knowing that we are getting closer to Christ's return, we especially should not be neglecting meeting together. We should be especially encouraging each other in this season. Verse 23 says, listen, if we get it right with God, which means, listen, if we get it right with God, if we're meeting with God, we're coming to the house of the Lord, we're feeding off the word of God, then verse 25 says we can get it right with each other. 
And that's why the local New Testament church matters because God wants us and he expects us to motivate each other, to encourage each other, to encourage each other. And as we see the day of Christ approaching, coming near, closer and closer, listen, we get to encourage each other to stay focused, hold tightly to the hope we affirm. Hebrews 10 says, and why does meeting together matter? Well, let me just put it this way. The local church is the hope of the world. We are hope on display to our local communities. And here's why God's plan includes, man, you and I. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. Do not miss these verses. They are great. I love this. He, talking about God, makes, makes the whole body. Could somebody please, please type these three words in the comments for me? Fit together perfectly. Remember the stained glass a few weeks ago where I said all these independent pieces that God's plan is to bring them together to create a beautiful mosaic in our communities because we're a multi-site church. We have campuses everywhere and we're going to start more campuses and more churches in the future. And we're to go everywhere telling everyone about Jesus but as we collectively come together as a family individuals become a forever family because of the work and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Listen, God fits us perfectly together. This is huge, right? I want you to know that, that God's got a great plan for your church. And this is why the local church matters. The local church is, man, the extension. You've heard this before, right? We've said it for years at Granite. We're the extension, the reflection, the expression of Jesus in our communities. Hey, you're not an independent agent. You are part of the family of God. And God expects you to be a part of his local New Testament church. I'm going to give you a little illustration. So you've been with Pastor the Cook. You've been with Pastor the Arts and Craft guy. Now this week you get to be with Pastor the Landscaper. I, there's like what some kind of word, horticultural person or something. I don't know what it is, but I do know what it means to landscape and to trim up some trees. I have a beautiful tree next to me, okay? And this tree is rooted in some soil. And we've been growing this tree now for 23 years. I'm not making that up. This tree's been growing on my property for 23 years. It's a healthy tree. You can see it looks good. It looks healthy. It's producing fruit or leaves. Why? Because it's planted. Remember what the Bible says, that God says if we're going to flourish, we got to be planted in the house of the Lord. But the Bible goes on to say in 1 Peter 5, 8, are you with me? Are you with me? That we have an enemy, an adversary, the devil who goes around seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he may cut off. Seeking whom he may separate. Because that's who, who the hunter goes after if you watch Discovery Channel, right? I mean, those, those herds are always trying to separate one animal from the bigger herd, right? Those little, those, those, those dogs, those, those, those hyenas. What are they trying to do? They're trying to separate somebody from the bigger herd so they can attack it. And here's what the devil does. I'm going to just show you a little illustration right here. The devil... He wants to come in our lives and he wants to diminish. He wants us to let go of our hope. He wants us to release our hope. He wants to put some hope lockers out there. And what he's constantly doing is he is trying to cut you. Now listen to me. Are you listening? I want to say it one more time because I love the word listen. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The devil is constantly trying to cut you off from a healthy community. And, and guess what? Man, this is going to stay like this pretty for a while. It's going to, but but the immediate the, the second it was cut off from the thing that it was rooted to, I just want you to know it began dying. Are you listening to me? It began dying, and all of a sudden, guess what happens? You can take this now, and it just goes its own way. But let me show you something real quick. Pretty soon, 
This is what it becomes. This is what it becomes. And there are Christians now, there are Christians now that are neglecting the meeting together. They've cut themselves off. They have allowed the devil to cut them off. The world, the flesh, the devil, situations and circumstances have cut them off. And this right here is in their future. They will dry up. Their leaf will wither. That's what Psalm 1 says. They become brittle. They break easy. What once was a testimony for Jesus now it becomes fussing and cussing on Facebook and complaining and all kinds of stuff, right? Listen, God's got a great plan for your life. And we have a mission as a church. And that is to go everywhere telling everyone about Jesus, keeping our hope on display. Somebody put that in the comments for me. Keeping our hope on display. I want to show you a verse today here on my TV. And I really want you to see this because it's a very important verse. And it talks to uh, what the plan that God has is not only for our church, but for our future. It's found here in Romans. Romans chapter 15. And I want to show you this verse because it's pretty powerful. And it says this, my ambition, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, my ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been preached. That's why I love New England. I really do. Why I love New England. Where the, where the name of Christ has never been, never been heard. Rather than where, now look at these two words, a church. Rather where a church has already been started by somebody else. Do you see those two words, a church? Here's what God's plan has always been in the New Testament. God would save people, call those people out to go everywhere, telling everyone about Jesus, establishing a church. Okay, are you with me? Establishing a church to be a local, visible representation of Jesus Christ to those people communities and that's why hebrews 10 says we cannot neglect the coming together the meeting together it's why we got to hold firmly to our faith it's why we can't allow the devil to cut us off to separate us from the body to to cut us off from being planted in the house of the lord to be rooted in his word to be rooted with his people to be rooted in this house because the minute he cuts us off this begins to die at least in your life and I've seen it over and over again. And I don't want to see it in your life. The very next verse says this. Check this out. I have been following this plan spoken of in the scripture. See, this is God's plan. Spoken of in the scriptures where it says, those who have never been told about him will see. Will see. Did you hear that? They will see. Why does God call the church together? So we can put our hope on display. So people who have never, who have never heard about him, they will see our hope. They will see our mosaic. They will hear our stories. And we will draw attention to ourselves and bring God glory as other people start leaning in and start asking about our faith. It goes on to say, and those who have never heard of him, listen, will understand. Why will they understand? Because they're going to see our story. They're going to hear our story. They're going to see us go from a disaster piece to a masterpiece. They're going to see us go from hopeless to hopeful because God is good. Granted, this, this thing about ecclesiology, that this issue about the local church, it's a big deal. Church may look different in this season, but the mission is still the same. Stay strong. Stay connected. Hey, can I encourage you parents? Listen, keep your kids connected to the Word of God. It is easy for the kids to be drifting in this season. At Granny United, we have all of our kids stuff online. Please lead your children. Please check out the children's curriculum. Please make sure your kids are staying in church. They need the Word of God too. Parents of teenagers, Make sure your students staying connected to student ministry, that they're responding to their student leaders. Man, they got time to be on Xbox and PS4, and that's cool. I don't begrudge them of anything. Listen, set up some guidelines. A little less computer time, a little bit more student time. Connect to your student ministry. Our kids need the Lord. Hey, at the end of the day, here's the deal, man. 
this salvation. You want to know what it means to be fruitful. You want to know what it means to be planted. It all starts with knowing Jesus Christ is your Savior. I'm going to ask you a question today. Christians, I'm going to ask you to pray. Please be praying right now. For those of you that are watching, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or you're watching sometime during the week, do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you in a relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes or no? A relation, I didn't ask you if you know about him. Are you in a relationship with him? If you would say today, Pastor, to be honest with you, um, I wouldn't say I'm in a relationship with the Lord. Okay, can I help you with that right here, right now? How about right here, right now, we follow the Bible and what God says in his word. And here's what he said. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are ready to say yes to Jesus and begin a relationship, I want you to pray this in your heart. Ready? Are you ready? I really want you to pray this. Dear Lord Jesus, pray it in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, today I'm saying yes to you. Today I'm asking you to be my Savior. Today I'm inviting you into my heart. Right here, right now, God, I swing open the door of my life and I'm inviting you in. Jesus, I'm asking you to take control. Today, I say yes to you. Now, listen to me. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, I want you to do two things. Number one, I want you to put a little hand emoji up in the comments. Just raise your hand. It's okay. I want to give you a little shout out. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to take a screenshot or a picture of your TV of the link that's on the screen right now. And when we're done in just a couple minutes here, I want you to go to that link and I want you to fill out the information because we want to send you a Bible and we want to come by your side and encourage you in your walk with Jesus Christ. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. Stay connected, Christian. Man, stay tight, stay close, stay engaged. And I will see you Tuesday night, Facebook Live at 7.05. God bless.